Good morning. Today, we are working with Unit 3, Lesson 8. The objective today is for your child to get through this and understand how to draw pictures and write equations to help solve problems and more specifically solve word problems, which tend to be a little bit more difficult because we have to take time and understand the vocabulary that goes along with it. So again, this is a great time to spend time talking about what your child is understanding the word problem to be saying. So as you read the word problem, it's stopping and asking them, okay, what do you hear? What are they asking? What do you think they're asking to do? And we'll work on that together today. Again, it's a bit of comprehension within math. If you don't have your materials, please pause the video and go get them now. Again, like we did yesterday, you're going to start transitioning into the place value chart with your learning coach. More specifically, you're going to talk out each one of the numbers. Again, if you need a challenge problem, please start at the, the last um, number and then think of three more numbers that you can do, you can, you can uh, create to create a more of a challenge. So 325 or 475, or even if you need to get it, start getting into thousands. What does that mean? Pause the video and work it out with your learning coach. Here again, we are back to addition with our tens, hundreds, tens, and ones um, place value chart. If you need to, please pause the video and work out the math problem, the sum, with your learning coach. Here is the spiral review today. Again, which equation tells how many in all? When I was talking about at the beginning of the lesson, there are two frogs in the pond. There are five geese in the pond. Which equation tells how many in all? So as you're going through this equation, you're going to work it out with your learning coach, but you're going to talk it out with your learning coach too. So for instance, if I were sitting next to you and see, I would say there are two frogs in the pond. Okay. How many frogs do we know are in the pond? And then allow your child to respond. Again, writing that number, that numeral down on the whiteboard or paper or whatnot. So make, kind of making notes with the math. Then we go on to the next part. There are five geese in the pond, okay? So there's two frogs in the pond and there are five geese in the pond. How many geese are in the pond? What's the second number that's important? Have them write it down. The last question, the last, the actual question is which equation tells how many in all? What does it mean when you say how many in all? Are we doing addition? Are we doing subtraction? And then allow your child to think through that thought process. Again, it's looking at this and going, okay, how many are in all? What does that mean? Essentially from there, you can go in and you can start eliminating and helping your child learn how to eliminate problems within the multiple choice series. So again, this will be helpful for state testing, for other, when the actual tests are gonna take. Again, it's playing into the vocabulary and understanding the vocabulary. So go through this, pause this, go through it with your learning coach. Here are the direct instruction. And again, this is reiterating the problem previous. The guided instruction, you can draw a picture to help you solve a subtraction problem. Okay, so what kind of problem are we going to be solving? Your child will respond. Again, it's always posing these back as questions. Maya has seven grapes. How many grapes does she have? Okay, um, then they respond. Again, going through each part of this problem gradually and understanding what they need to do and why. Because again, a lot of these, especially Common Core, they give you information and then they give you a completely different question. So you want to make sure that your child's comprehending what they're asking to do, because a lot of the time our kids can, um, can be reading the problem correctly, but then are not anticipating the question they actually come up with. So again, pause the video and go through this with your learning coach. You can, if you feel like your child has mastered this, they can go on to take the, the actual assessment or go on to the flex problem to flex their brain before taking the assessment. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.